Welcome. This is K-Pop Sunday brought to you by K-Pop Sunday before you have to go back to work on Monday. We are your hosts, Onyx, Min, and JR. Welcome to episode 15. It's May. And today we're going to be talking about our favorite and possibly least favorite concept changes that a group has had. And in our next episode, we're also going to be talking about concept changes, but a bit more about how they affect the groups that had their concept changed. But that is all for next episode. So let us start off with what are some of you guys' favorite concept changes? For me, I split it between how their concept changed over their career and how their career like ended like their image versus just individual comebacks. So for me, I really like how over their career, HOT went from being basically a Sote GM Boys corporate copy to becoming the nation's idols. Like they were just supposed to tap into the teenage market and then they turned it to having direct messages to the country in general. I really like that maturity that they gained over the years, especially because at the beginning they were compared to Sote GM Boys, they were compared to Backstreet Boys so much, and then at the end, like where they went, it's very different than how those other groups ended up being. Another favorite I like is how End Flying, they went from like, at least at debut, they were just like these very cool guys. Then after they did the reel and they got their new member, they turned into a more fun image. So I just liked how it really did change the band. So that was pretty cute. Then for like specific comebacks, I liked how HOT's Aya, their outfits and like the song really matched the anger of events in Korea. Like they matched the song, the choreography, their outfits, the concept, all to a real situation that was going on. Snooper, I liked their Plectonic Love comeback because like I like concepts that are different from just like the average ooh boys being cool or cute and girls always wearing mini skirts and hot pants so whenever i see something different i'm more interested in it and uh in making my list i found that most of the concepts i really like are when they're from like a different decade like uh snoopers plectonic love theirs is more of like an 80s like it really matched it well Secrets with their uh, Shy Boy concepts, which were like 50s. And then I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I do like Tiara's Roly Poly, like the 90s feel. My all-time favorite, though, is Ladies Code So Wonderful, because it was very retro, but it was it was just really pretty and well done with how they did it. And a lot of people at the time compared them to Wonder Girls and their song Nobody, but to me, it feels very has two very different vibes, even though people want to say that they're the same thing. They're very different. So those are my favorites. So I really only picked two groups for this whole thing. So the one group, I really liked their concept change. And then the next group that we're going to talk about a little bit later, I did not like their concept change. But yeah, this is going to be a bit different than what Min and Onyx are going to talk about just because I did focus on one group and I kind of want to like talk about how their image changed over the years because this wasn't a overnight concept change. It happened kind of gradually, I would say. So the group I want to talk about is A Pink. They've been on the K-pop scene for almost 10 years now, which I did not realize. Like they've been around for so long and It just, it doesn't feel like they have been. And I think that is part of the reason I chose them to talk about because they've been able to keep up with the newer girl groups. I think that's something that we should applaud them for because they did debut in 2011 and now in 2020 even, they're still a current relevant group in my opinion. So yeah, they debuted in 2011 with a a cute concept with the song I Don't Know And I feel like what people think of when they think of girl groups is a song like this. Because it's super upbeat and really orchestral. There's a lot of strings. The members are all dressed in flowy white dresses. And there's a lot of pink and flowers and their hair is flowy. And you think of K-pop girl group, this is the song you are thinking of, even if it's not this song specifically. Although, I do want to say the makeup looks kind of odd now that you look at it now. And I don't know if it was like the styling overall just for that because their eyebrows are like non-existent it it was so weird i like 
<laughs> I was watching the music video again, and I was like, I don't remember this being like that. But, I mean, they're gorgeous girls anyway, even without eyebrows. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and I also want to mention that I'm just, everything I'm talking about, I'm only talking about their title tracks, because when you look at teaser images and concept trailers and stuff like that, that's what the song and the styling, they correlate to each other, and not necessarily all the music in the albums. So yeah, they continued on with that cutesy concept. My My, No No No, Mr. Chu, they all sound kind of similar. They're all really twinkly, and their music is really upbeat, and that's fine. I like groups that have very similar sounds throughout all their music. That's not a problem for me. I'm not calling them out for that. And in fact, it's understandable why they chose to keep the concept for so long, because they were really loved for it. And on top of all that, the members were really sweet, and they're really good actresses, and there's a lot of reasons why they're loved. But I also want to mention that they were really young when they debuted, so the oldest member, Chorong, was 20, and the youngest member, Hayoung, was 15. So I think that is also one of the reasons they kept the cute concept for so long. And then they came out with a song called Hush, and I feel like that was a little bit of a change, or at least it felt like it was trying to be a change from the cute songs, but it was a little bit more mature in parts of the styling, but it was still oddly cutesy. And I feel like there is a bit of cognitive dissonance when it comes to A-Pink, because some of their songs, it's like, they're kind of sexy in some way, and then they're also really cutesy, so you're kind of like trying to balance the two in your head. Yeah, I, I get what you're trying to say, like, it's hard to be like, is it gonna be sexy or is it gonna be cute? I don't know. Right, exactly, and I feel like that's not all of their music, because a lot of them you look at the styling and like the music video itself, and you're like, okay, that is completely cute, they're not trying to be sexy, but then there's other songs where it's like, they're still cute, but the choreography is a little bit more seductive and the outfits are a little bit more mature, but they're still in a cute concept, regardless of that fact. And it could be kind of weird to watch at some points. So yeah. that's what I was trying to, that's essentially what I was trying to say. Yeah. And then Love came out and I feel like that is the older sister to their cutesy concepts in the sense that it still is in the same vein as their older music, but you could see that they're growing up and becoming a bit more mature and not as childish. The styling was very grown up compared to their previous styling, and the choreography is similar and the song is similar, but the whole overall look of the group, I think they tried to make them look a little bit older. And that was also the case for Remember. Then Only One came out in 2016, and that's actually one of my favorite songs. And I would say it's also the first real divergence from their usual concept, because the song was a lot more R&B, and the styling was a lot more mature, and it just had a different air to it. And I do like their other music, but I really loved this song because it was so different from their other stuff. And then a mixture of that, I feel like, was continued on their old concept and their cute concept with You Are My Star in Five, I feel like you can see an upgraded version of that concept in those songs. And then the 180 happened, and I have never been more here for a concept change ever. Like, this also, it, it came to me out of, like, left field. I wasn't expecting it. But I'm So Sick and Ng Ng came out. Obviously, there was time between the two, but I feel like they're still in the same category. And this is nothing like their old music, in my opinion. They really did it so well. It feels super seamless and super natural and not at all forced. And when I'm saying they had a 180 change, I'm not saying it doesn't feel like a pink anymore because I feel like it does. And that's what makes it such a natural change for them. It still feels like them, but it's them as adults. And the styling for both the songs is super pretty and dark and luxurious, which is a complete departure from the sundresses and the sailor outfits that they put them in and like, no, no, no. I really love the new direction they're going in and I'm super excited for their next comeback, which might actually have happened by the time this episode comes out. So we'll see what I think then. <laughs> Min, why don't you tell us about your groups? I don't have a lot of like super in-depth stuff to say but the first one that came to mind was brown eyed girls because back in the day when they first made their debut 
with Come Closer. They didn't even appear in their own music videos, and their sound was a bit more almost indie-like, because back then their entertainment, Nega Network, wasn't the big entertainment we know them as today. And then a couple of years after Come Closer was released, they released the song Love, which was basically the song that made the shift to more electronic dance music, and their sound changed to a more like commercially friendly sound, but they still always kept that edge, kind of. Their lyrics have always been about pretty dark stuff, and their music videos have always been a bit more explicit, not in like a super raunchy, sexy way, but using sex and violence to tell a good story. And I really appreciate that, and I love that they're now the group that they are today, because had they never changed away from the Come Closer era, we wouldn't have the Brian Eyed Girls we have today. Did they leave the faceless group concept behind because it didn't work for them? Or Yeah, I think okay. so. And their sound was also a bit, like, not mainstream enough. Right, right. Because I'm pretty sure, was it Wonder Girls or something, that debuted at the same time as Brian Eyed Girls debuted? So they were, like, they were In run over. almost. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Yeah, but led to a lot of good music, though. Yeah, I yeah. Them. I think they would have had more of a chance if they had debuted a couple of years earlier. Like, if they yeah. had debuted around 2004, I think that would have been a very different beginning for them. But that's yeah. also that's also true, though, with all idols, where depending on when they debuted, like, what point in history, that would have changed how their success. But there's some, I feel oh, like, yeah, that would have... Like, if Sea Clown had come out in 2003... No, not 2003. If it would have been 2004. 2004 was way... Would have been, like, prime. They would have been up there with TVXQ. Like, not, yeah. like, number one, like, but they would have been up there. Next group I want to mention is Red Velvet, because their concept is basically a dual concept. So they haven't really had a big concept change since their concept is having two different concepts, with the red side being all happy bubbly and the velvet side being all kind of mature and sensual. I guess. I don't know. But still, I like them. I remember when Happiness came out, and it took a while, but it grew on me really, really hard. And then, not long after that, they released their cover of Be Natural by Sess, and I was like, Oh my god, this group, I love it. I'm not gonna say that I love every single song they have ever released, but I really like them. I like, I like what they got going, okay? <laughs> I know. I think Red Velvet is kind of unique in that way. I'm not saying that other groups don't change their concept, but the fact that they have that concept built into their image is really cool. And I also feel like they kind of decide on which side to go with according to the season, which I think is also kind of fun. Like, they'll release Red Flavor in the summer, and then yeah. a more Velvet song in the winter. And I just, I really like that too, so... Good yeah. choice. <laughs> they good. Another one that I, uh, I'm I don't dislike it, but I'm also I don't know. This one is weird, but Two Four K is a boy group that debuted a long time ago, in the time when like Block B and B A P was the big thing, and like everybody was doing super manly rap, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they came out with a song called Hurry Up. That was their debut song. It, it's good. It, it's like the other boy groups that was trying to be BAP back in the day. But then their second single was You Are So Cute. And that song is great. I love it so much. And it's the most bubblegum pop song ever. And you can see how awkward some of the guys in the music video are, well, like, three of them are just living, because it's it's great. <laughs> you can really see how influenced they were by B1A4, which were kinda popular back then, 
You Are So Cute is such a good song, and it's such a 180 just flip from the super masculine side, and it's also the only really cute song that they released, because their next release was back to being manly men, and their like super manly concept continued. I think their only like super popular song was Superfly, which is pretty old by now. But yeah, we need more boy groups to just embrace the cute concept. But that's what the world needs. <laughs> I feel like a lot of times the ones that do start out with cute concepts, it's because they're younger and then they get a little older and they're like, well, we can't do that anymore. And they turn into generic boy group. Yeah. <laughs> but that's also a thing, though, with members. It's like, oh, you're the one that's going to be cute. And, like, they promote them as cute. And JYJ's Junsu mentioned this before that, oh, you, why aren't you being cute anymore? Like, you were the cute member. He's like, yeah, I'm too old for that. And, like, my fans are fed up with that. Like, they want me to grow <laughs> up now. So, yeah. like, there's also, like, a time where fans are like, okay, you're done. You're not cute anymore. Which I think, so, I think it was Super Junior Song Min who was like, I'm always cute. That was, like, it was one of the later comebacks he was in where people were, like, trying to, say, stop being cute. And he's like, that's just who I am. I'm just adorable. Get over yourselves. But I think Sung Min's fascinating because he always was between the line of adorable and very masculine. He he always walked that line. And I think that's, I think that's a very interesting thing that I don't think a lot of people talk about, but... Okay, I have one more, and then we'll go over to concept changes we didn't like. But the last one that I really loved was actually from Ihyori. I can never pronounce her name right, but I love her. As of recording this, her newest album called Black, which came out in 2017, when she came out with Black, both the single and the album, it was such a huge change from her pop persona, because... Like, when you think of Lee Hyori, you think of You Go Girl and 10 Minutes and maybe even her more recent Bad Girls, which are all, like, pop songs. They're really good pop songs, but they're still pop songs. And then she came out with the singles Black and Soul, which are both, like, slow, hip hop -y, soul-based songs. And they're so good. And I know a lot of people didn't like that release because it was just so different from her pop persona but i was like oh my god this is amazing her songs are so chill i love it and i really wish she would just release more music like this but i doubt it because she's married she had a tv show at some point about being married <laughs> i don't know i just want more music from her and more like chill music because she seemed more i don't know comfortable with it, except her dancing in the soul performances was a bit eh. But she still seemed way more relaxed and comfortable. This is probably the most drastic concept change on my list, at least. So let's jump over to concept changes we weren't as big of a fan of. Okay, so I'm gonna be stating a lot of unpopular opinions, but y'all know my style, so tough bananas. Hot takes with Onyx. <laughs> yeah, very hot, very hot, very hot out of the presses, starting fights. I love when they had AOA Black, and they had, like, that whole rock band concept, and I thought it was really cool, and they had very interesting sound, and I love how different that was to their more dance con- like, when they would do, like, the dance version, but I really just like how they went from rock band and, like, something different to something just sexy, because- there's a lot of groups that do just sexy, but not every girl group tries to be a rock band. Like, w there's significantly less girl rock bands than there are boy rock bands. And especially because they're from FNC, the fact that it got dropped so quickly really annoys me. Like, I feel like they didn't really get a chance. Like, compared to their boy groups who they let figure out their sound and get their audience, they gave them much longer time than they gave AOA. That really ticks me off. And, I, and the fact that they've never returned to it, that really bugs me. I was really expecting someone to jump in and disagree. So. <laughs> the thing is, I only really know AOA's recent releases. Like, I knew that they oh, okay. were a band at one point. And the thing is, I kind of like a lot of their more recent releases. Like, I think the, excuse me, that one's so catchy. 
It is. But I know I a hate... lot of people don't love it, so... The thing that I hated about I Excuse Me was how very clearly it felt very... The choreography felt very lazy because it was just, hey, look, these are very sexy girls and, like, we're taping them into their shoes because mm-hmm. doing dance moves with those shoes, they their shoes would fly off. Like, it felt like it was just, like, they were going, they were reaching too much. So that annoyed me, but I really love that song. There's a lot of times where I don't like the concept, but I love the music. There's a bit of a disconnect with me, but, um, yeah, go back and listen to their Elvis, the rock band version of it. To me, it's way better, and it is way more interesting. I really loved it. Is there any, just side question, because I also really like girl group bands. My favorite was Bebop. Which only released oh. one song, I think. Maybe, yeah. maybe two. And I was so disappointed when they just disappeared. And I'm like, are there any girl bands out there that are still a band? Yeah, well, there are. It's just the fact that they don't really get much press. And so for one to come from, like, AOA, to come from a company that people kind of know, yeah, that was like, oh, that's really cool, but then they dropped it. It's like, oh, no, we give up. Yeah, It's like, you could have been spearheading... Girls in rock music becoming, like, a standard thing. And instead you chose, like, it, it felt to me like they just gave up. Like, I feel like there's some companies where, especially with girl groups, it's like, let's try to something innovating. And then when it doesn't catch on immediately, they just give up. Same happened with Global Icon. I'm still, I'm still sad. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just, why? Why? Why you, why you gotta be that way? Although, like, Wonder Girls did have the band element, and I loved that. And once again, though, it didn't catch on, and we've not seen that sort of... We haven't seen JYP having that sort of girl band thing. Yeah. Like, that was just like, okay, I guess that's just Wonder Girls' thing for the end of their discography. It was so cool, but it was just like, no, you cannot have more of this. We will not introduce another girl group that has this. Which I want to throw out there again. I would love to see a band version of Super M. In yes. the same sense, like, you take yes. members of other groups, put them together in one group, and let them make music, and let it be a band. Because so many of these yes. idols are talented musicians, yes. and they never get to show that. So, agree. Totally. companies listening to us, please, do that, please. <laughs> and let it not just yeah. be a TV thing, like, the Dazzling Red was for a show, and it was, they only released one song, and it was really good. And then they just disappeared. And I was like, no, please. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, that's It's stuff like that that I really genuinely do want. And that idols say, oh, I'd like to do this. But then they never get to. And that bugs me. Because that means that we are missing out on really good music. That it's like the world could have this. Moving on. I liked Piggy Dolls at debut. Because I thought they were really groundbreaking for K-pop. Mm. To have uh, girls that were not like the that were not like the standard that we see and also because they had great vocals yeah so it was like nice and like my friend group we all immediately were huge fans of them and we try to talk about them all the time so then when they came back and it's like oh we switched stuff and we're no longer doing that but we're still gonna call them piggy dolls it was like well then what's the point i think the arguments were just that oh it's not something that's done. People might not be interested in it because it didn't get traction immediately. Because they're a new group and give them time, they will grow into it. Don't just give up immediately when you're innovating. And so that's still something that makes me annoyed. Other things that I highly don't like, uh, I'm gonna be, come on, say it. I don't like Suju's Sorry Sorry. I hate it. <laughs> when it first came out, it was such a disappointment because, like, yes, the dance moves are awesome. And, like, that's really impressive. Like, I'm not saying it's not. But coming off of the first two albums where it really showcased how great their vocals are, for the title track to be so auto tuned like, I know, like, that was the style at the time for groups to do that. It really annoyed me because it's like, this is a group that has great vocals why are you doing this? Like, yes, it's an artistic choice, but it felt... Because the audio was released before the music video, and I remember hearing it and thinking, I can't distinguish their voices. I don't know who's who. And, like, I know who's who. So it just really bothered me. But then, like, their sidetracks all showed, hey, their vocals, 
still here. We can still show them. Not everything's auto-tuned here. Like, Reset and Monster were excellent. And then, obviously, It's You came out, and that's one of my favorite tracks from them. But Sorry Sorry was such a letdown because it used auto-tune. And it, to me, it felt like it was just boring. And especially, like, considering that, like, their last album had Don't Don't, and it had so much to it. Even though I know that there were a lot of issues with it, I still felt like it was way more interesting than Sorry Sorry. So I was very disappointed. I'm probably the only person who ever was. And, like, I do like the song now, but, like, at the time when it came out, I was like, oh, it was such a letdown to me. Was that the one that kicked off their repetitive title track kind of like yes yeah <laughs> there's a lot of repetition yep. and a lot of super junior songs <laughs> and nobody can deny that yeah well it, yeah yeah no i'm gonna like you don't go to super junior because they're innovating music itself like even though like yes members have been like getting on to producing music for the group and choreography and stuff you don't go to them because they innovate the industry <laughs> they you go to them because they're fun, they're fascinating, and they're very talented. But as someone who'd been with Super Junior since you, then cut to Sorry Sorry, it was like, what is this nonsense? Like, I do, once again, I do like it now, but it's still, at the time though, it was very disappointing. Because a lot of groups had been turning to autotune, and it had been kind of thought, at least at the time, that it was a way to cover up when idols were not vocally talented. And it was kind of seen as, like, being lazy, so it's like, oh, so this group's using autotune because they don't have any good singers. But then, obviously, it became like, no, it's because it could be that, but it could also just be artistic choice because they want this sound on it. But, mm -hmm. yeah, at the time, I really hated it. Another thing that I hate has to be Tiara, how they went from having very fascinating concepts to generic, just, like, generic sexy girl concepts. Like, going from, like, Bopi Bopi and yeah 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 to just okay we're pretty and we're dancing it's like okay I was bored like they make good like the music's great still but I was bored watching the music videos and I was just like oh okay that's it but that's what they wanted they didn't like they didn't like Roly Poly they didn't like Bopi Bopi like there were a lot of things that they didn't like so that's why but still kind of disappointed me because I thought they were really cool for doing something different I get how they might dislike Boppy Boppy though. Like, I I I no, I totally get it. But it's like then choose a concept. Like, don't just be generic. I felt like their later, at least like their later music videos, is like anyone else could have done that. Whereas like especially their first album, which was so good, it felt like oh, this is them. They're yes, they're making really good dance slash club music, but. They're also very fascinating to watch. I was just kind of sad. And it's just me. No one else agrees. Another one, once again, that is very unpopular. I dislike Big Bang's later ballads. Like, I loved Haru Haru and Lies. But then their later stuff was just boring. <laughs> and like the music videos, it's like, okay. I didn't have any connection with it. Didn't really care. So I only liked their more energetic main tracks. And I know I'm in the minority. I found it really boring. I feel like with their high energy stuff, they got more and more creative. But with ballads, the, at least with concept-wise, like not musically, concept-wise, it just felt boring. To be fair, the last, what was it? Made was their last official release, I think, as a whole group. And like, mm -hmm. that was actually an album, not a single. Yeah, um, yeah well, I I'm like... also including albums. I mean, singles too. Okay, right, right. Um, but I'm just, because I, I did follow, like, the maid progression or whatever that yeah, yeah. ended up being. And I, did too, I feel yeah. like it was very much a product of the time, and a lot of yeah. music videos looked the way those videos did during that time. Which isn't necessarily good, not necessarily bad. It just, it, just, it came yeah. out of the mid-2010s, and yeah. it looks like it did. <laughs> but did you, like, sober? No. <sighs> Is that a ballad? Kinda. I really did not. I was just like, okay. Wait, was that a ballad, though? It's a sad pop rock song, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. See, I was thinking, I was like, wait, is that a ballad? Because I don't remember it being I was a ballad. Say, I, I love that song. I just, I really the whole thing was one. just pass to me. Like, um, I can get, like, Monster, for instance. 
not my. Mo oh, I, I did like Monster. I yeah, good that point. One good is point. I did like Monster. Ears. I thought it was interesting. <laughs> Music video is interesting. Um, Song to me was incredibly boring. <laughs> I like the I like both, but the hairstyles, oof, oof. Especially Poor Tae Young. He really, he really got a beating for that one. That one was so bad. Yeah, I still really like yeah. Haru Haru and Lies, but man, they don't age well, like sound wise. Yeah. But Really? Because I I think they I think especially Har Har holds up. I think that might just be nostalgia, my friend. <laughs> no, no, I just like the song like is it. still good, but if you show it to a K-pop fan who's been into K-pop for the last six months only, they're gonna be like, "Man, this is trash." <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, but also, but keep in song. mind, I'm also, I'm also the same person who's very much a fan of like. 1920s music so i'm very well aware i've got i'm a very much into any time period any genre kind of person it's more like what's this track doing that i'm more that type of person another uh, concept i really hated like a big bang i just felt like it was just boring there wasn't like one thing i could really pull out i just like stuff that's different i really hate when co-ed group got split between speed and five dolls how they were so fun when they were co-ed school, but then there was just no innovating. It was just kind of boring on the five dolls end. Like I like with Speed, they had What Do You with like those little skater shoes, and that was really cool. But Five Dolls didn't really get that sort of interesting thing for me. Yeah, they kind of fell into the your generic sexy girl group now. <laughs> Have fun. Yeah, and which is which is sad because. Like, they were really cool as co-ed group. I really liked them. Even though they only had, like, two releases. They were... I love, I like them a lot. Uh, another one which I, everyone tends to agree. I like the track, but I very much recognize that Eat You Up is not was not a good concept. It's like, the there were two concepts. It's the best she has ever released, and it's her best music video. <laughs> so you're no, well, the thing, the thing is, like... There's two different versions of it. There's the one where, like, she's at, like, a dance competition and she's wearing, like, frumpy clothes and stuff like that. That one, I don't have a problem with it because it also kind of makes me think of, like, a combination of Hurricane Venus and One Shot, Two Shot. Yeah. Like, I, it's kind of, like, in that same vein. Whereas the other one that's black and white that's, like, we'll get Western audiences with this. It was just, like, ooh. ooh. It was it's also, a like. masterpiece. No, no, don't you dare. <laughs> it was just, as a longtime Boa fan, it was just, what? Uh, enough about me and starting fights with people. Min, what do you dislike about people's concepts? I only really have one that comes to mind as a, oh, wh why did you do this? It was Global Icon or GI, who was originally like rap based rap hip hop based. I wasn't too big of a fan of their single Beatles, which is like their most known single, but I really liked the song called Push It with I think it was Doc 2 or something. I'm not entirely sure who it was a collab with, but that song made me really love them. And then lineup changes and a lot of stuff happened and they released the single Doligo or something along those lines. Which, it's a good song. I really, really like the song, but it's the very classical high heels, hot pants, sexy dance moves type thing. They just completely left the hip-hop concept in the back and never picked it back up, and then they disbanded, and it was really sad. <laughs> it feels like a lot of the girl groups we've mentioned, they start out with a unique quote-unquote concept, and then... After one comeback, they're like, well, we tried it, and now we're going to make them generic. Yeah, which and is well, unfortunate. Yeah, that's the same with me with uh, when I put my list together. It's like, I tried to look more at whole careers, but then I was like, there are certain comebacks that they did one time, never repeated again. Like, don't, don't. Mm -hmm. They never did any, like, serious, like, criticism like that ever again, or TVXQ, they only kept it for a couple of things, but then after the split, they never really went back to it, which kind of sad. Yeah. But, but yeah, JR, do you have any changes you didn't like? Yes, and this one... 
You're I'm, scared. I <laughs> I'm kind of scared to talk about it, but Do also it. it's kind of painful for me too because I really really love this group and then they released some stuff that I didn't like and I don't want to say that it's a betrayal as a fan. Like, I felt betrayed as a fan, or they betrayed me, or something like that. Like, I'm not trying to say that. It's just, it's disappointing when a group you really enjoy ends up going in a direction that you don't enjoy. (laughs) So I do want to say that every time they release something, I listen to it to see if I'll like it. But if I don't, I'll just be like, okay, it's not my style. That's fine. So the group I'm going to talk about is Seventeen, and I loved Seventeen so much that I went and saw them in concert in 2017, and that was great because that's like right at the edge of where I fell off, (laughs) like release-wise with their music. So they debuted in 2015 with Adore You, and I'm going to lump Monse and Pretty You together with Adore You because they're all kind of similar sounding, and they're all within the fresh concept category, and I I just, I really loved the sound of it. There was a lot of bounciness. It was super upbeat and really fun. And I would probably say Manse is my favorite out of all three of them. And I feel like part of the reason I love them so much was because a lot of the groups at the time were more hard hitting, I guess. And the darker image was cool. Like the dark image never goes away in boy groups. I feel like there's always a few groups that are going to have that. But Seventeen, they're a group that they started off bright and I wouldn't necessarily say cute. I think they usually used fresh as their adjective for how they describe their music. But the best that I can describe those three songs that I just mentioned, and I'm not a music person, so... If I'm getting this wrong, I hope I'm not murdered. Um, But it's kind of like modern big band music. There's a lot of guitar and drums and horn, but there's still like a synthetic beat in the background that kind of keeps the energy up and stuff like that. Or I also was thinking maybe it's kind of like a pit band type sound because Pretty You is really musical-esque. I don't know. There's a lot of real instrument sounds in their music as opposed to it all being electronic and I really like that. Then Aju Nice and Boom Boom came out and they're not really similar songs but they're all kind of still in the same vein and this is when I felt like the group was kind of maturing and shifting directions a little bit because while the music still had the same 17 feel it felt like they were getting older and as I was writing this, I realized that what really made me, not necessarily really made me stop liking a lot of their music is they stopped using horns in their music. And I love horns, okay? (laughs) I don't, not enough groups use horn in their music. And I think that needs to change. (laughs) I'd like to see more big band stuff. Like just personally, I'd like to see some, you know, Cab Calloway type of stuff or, yeah. yeah. Because it, I feel like it's, it's just, it's more fun. Yeah. When you have that kind of thing in the background. And I think they did a good job of mixing that sound in with the sounds of the time. And I feel like it, I don't want to say that it makes it timeless necessarily, but it makes it have a little bit more longevity since it's not one exact genre that they're in, Mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, I think what also contributes to whether a song is lasted or not is it just playing into the time period or is it like, hey, I just like this sound. I'm going for it. Like, mm-hmm. it was it just chasing? Because there's some right. songs that you know aren't going to age well just because they're chasing. And there's some groups that are known mm-hmm. for who just chased. So they're stuck just being that time period. And so then they're not timeless. They're of the yeah. time. Which kind of goes into the next one, which is after those songs came out, Don't Wanna Cry came out. And that's the same time that I went to the concert. So that was the title track that they had just promoted before going on tour. And it felt very similar to the other music that was coming out during that time. It was really electronic and there was no horn, but I still liked it. It wasn't my favorite release of theirs for a long shot, but I still liked the song and I listened to it quite a bit during that summer. But then Clack came out immediately after And it felt like a return to their old music. And I was really for it because it seemed like an upgraded, more mature version of what I had initially fallen in love with. And that was also the last album as a whole that I had really loved and listened to all the songs and enjoyed. And then Thanks came out and I was like, okay, it's okay. I I didn't 
love it. It was more along the lines of don't want to cry. And I felt I felt like they were very similar. It's not the same song. I'm not saying they're carbon copies, but it felt too much like don't want to cry. And I mean, I think they did promote it, but it was more of a fan song, I remember, than anything else. But I still was like, oh, I don't like it very much. <laughs> And then Oh My came out, which was kind of a callback to their old song, but I, again, didn't like it very much. I thought it was just okay. And then I didn't really follow the promotions for that song at all. And then Home came out and Getting Closer, and I think Hit is their latest comeback. And I just, all of them were just okay to me. I don't think I ended up listening to any of them that often. And... I think it's partially because the bubbly sound really only shows up every once in a while. And like with Oh My, I didn't even really like it. So I guess the moral of the story is after Clap, I kind of stopped <laughs> following their music. <laughs> Which is I really sad because I really love them. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But yeah, that is that is the story. That was tragic. It really was. I was very disappointed. Not in them. I feel like I, feel like I have to again say the thing like when we're talking about this we're not mad at the members or the no. companies necessarily even for changing up the concepts that happens all the time in k-pop and you can't really hold on to anything for too long because a change will come and you can't change that yeah it's just certain times though it's just like wow this is really out of the wheelhouse and then i think that that's what makes it surprising it's like oh mm -hmm. why when you, yeah. you weren't expecting it, but that's also up to each individual fan. Because there's certain concepts I think, wow, this is great, and everyone's like, garbage. So, yeah. to each his own. So, shall we go into the trivia question for today? So, Shinwa are known for being K-pop legends and having a long career. But do you know what their debut song was? If you have the answer, tell us on any of our social media sites, and we'll give you a shout-out in the next episode. For the song of the day... Today, May 10th, 2005, Jang Yoon Jong released her second album, Jang Hyun Jong the Second, with the single Jan Jira, or It's Salty, I think it's translated to, which is a really cute trot song. And she is known as one of the top female trot singers. Because even though this song came out in 2005, she has been releasing music regularly since, and I'm pretty sure her newest release was last year in 2019. So you should really go listen to her music. It's good. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, then be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and tell your friends about us. If you want to interact with us or find more of our content, then you can follow us on our Twitter, at KpopSunbase, or on our Tumblr pages, which will be in the show notes. You can also expect our next episode to come out on May 24th, 2020, so please be on the lookout for that. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Annyeong.